Hi, and welcome to Studio 501c3. I'm your host, Kim Jones, Executive Director of the Nonprofit Village. This show features nonprofit organizations that are designated as 501c3 by the IRS because they provide a public benefit, and oftentimes your donations to them are tax deductible. We are proud to partner with Montgomery Community Media on Studio 501c3, collaborating to feature some of the county's best nonprofit programs and services. Today, we have the pleasure of featuring Montgomery County Collaboration Council, a nonprofit that serves as a local catalyst, a broker for public-private uh, investments in the betterment of youth in the community. Uh, the executive director, Elijah Wheeler Jr., is with me. And Elijah, thanks for coming on. It's good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Good, good. Okay, so Montgomery County Collaboration Council. Uh, collaboration, obviously, is the key word. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the work, how this collaboration uh, really comes together, and what the impact is on the youth development that you're working on in the community? Great. Thanks, Kim. I appreciate it. And thank you for the question. Glad to be here today. So as you stated earlier, uh, we are the local management board here in Montgomery County. Uh, by state statute, there is a local management board in each county here in the state of Maryland. So there would be 24 mm -hmm. local management boards uh, in total. Yeah. Uh, okay. we, are one, we are one of those 24. We have been in existence here in Montgomery County since 1992. Okay. Uh, we are charged specifically with working with both public and private partners to identify issue areas uh, and as well as barriers that are presented to our youth, uh, children, and families here in Montgomery County, and leveraging various resources to redress those issues that we've identified. Uh, we typically do that by being a nonpartisan broker of public and private dollars, such as you stated, uh, where we can bring along other agencies and groups to collaborate with us in order to in, uh, invest and achieve uh, positive results in total here in the community. Uh, we do that in one of five ways, typically uh, through the convening of partners, through assessment and planning, implementing uh, solutions, uh, evaluating those investments, and then sharing knowledge. And hopefully by one of those five ways, we are able to uh, grow Montgomery County on behalf of its youth, children, and families to be uh, an environment in which families can thrive, not survive, but actually thrive and achieve those positive results that we all would like to see them achieve. Okay, so going back to how you how you even set up is this local management board, is, is that unique just to the state of Maryland or are there other structures in other states that work similarly? It, it actually is unique to the state of Maryland. Okay. Um, we had a conversation, uh, and when I say we, I'm talking at the state level just a few weeks ago around that level of uniqueness. Uh, actually, the Brookings Institute did a report or published a report a couple of months back around local management boards and how it's a model that other states should actually replicate when dealing yeah. with local jurisdictions, right? Uh, and the understanding that the state can't solve all the issues of its jurisdictions, that there should be some level of local control to really, you know, redress a lot of the issue areas that we've identified here locally, uh, and then kind of give that feedback to the state around those investments the state should be making in the local jurisdictions in order to remove some of those barriers that we identify locally. Okay, so that's that's good to know that we've got this best practice. We are um, innovative in the state of Maryland, so uh, we're proud of that. Um, the are the activities of every local management board the same, or it's it's different in each jurisdiction? Just real quick. Yeah, it's different in each jurisdiction. Okay. It okay. really just kind of depends on what you've identified locally as being a barrier or an issue area that you want to address. Okay, so you talked about a wide range of things over those um, five pillars that you have. Everything from mental health to social justice programs. These, these I think, are innovative collaborations. Um, describe specifically some of those activities and some of the resources that are available to all of these uh, organizations in the community that you do bring together. Because you seem to be the kind of the keeper of knowledge. You, you've got all of the resources. You're the go-to organization for everyone else, and and, um, and you're you know you're bringing it, you're the hub that brings it all together. So, so I think the key word there is that convening, right? The convening of partners. So engaging leaders, right? Convening key stakeholders, 
and then also creating strategic alliances along with a common agenda in order mm -hmm. to address a lot of the issues, right? Uh, and trying to push the, the, for lack of a better phrase, push the ball down the field. Uh, bringing diverse people and voices together, we know is imperative. So in order to find fresh perspectives and voices, uh, convening is that integral part that gives us the opportunity essentially to be active members within the community we actually serve, right? So we effectively are able to create a, a marketplace for ideas where we can both be uh, host and stakeholder. And this mm -hmm. really allows for us to then internally revisit our own approaches and mm -hmm. uh, reflect on new ideas to drive the work forward here locally. And you have this really, um, this this broad um, staff where you have people that are experts in so many different areas that you've brought together even on your staff in order to address and probably facilitate those convenings better. That's why you're so good at what you do because you, you have uh, people you know, that are coming from different industries, from different perspectives, different education levels, everything is right there in one organization. Yeah, and I, and I think that's what makes us really unique, you know. So once again, it goes back to one of those key drivers being sharing knowledge, right? So having staff that are subject matter experts uh, within a specific field, you know, in one case, youth development, which you touched upon earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So you have staff who really understand what youth development looks like and how it should actually play out when it comes to youth programs or youth serving programs. And then what it also allows for us to do is to serve as a strategic thought partner. Right. Mm -hmm. That allows for us to really envelop ourselves in that practice of sharing those ideas and experiences with others in order to help them navigate these complex challenges that we identify here locally. Right. OK, great, great. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit more about youth development, but we're first going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll get, dive a little bit more into those specific programs. Stay with us. You're watching Studio 501C3 on Montgomery Com community media, and we'll be right back. Jimmy can't sing, and Tommy can't dance, so, so we're, we're gonna, gonna put, put some ants in their pants. Aww, and walk like a monkey, <laughs> and hop like a bunny. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants. They've got ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants. Ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants. They've got ants in their pants. They've got ants in their pants. One more time. Jimmy can't sing. And Tommy can't dance. So we're going to put some ants in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants. They've got ants in their pants. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Welcome back to Studio 501C3. I'm here today with Elijah Wheeler, the Executive Director of Montgomery County Collaboration Council. So uh, before we went to break, I wanted to get to a little bit more about the youth development. Um, because of the structure, because of how you convene, because of how you, uh, you know, drive uh, the agenda forward uh, in the community, how are youth and youth serving organizations better off? What's the direct impact that you see from all of this work that you're doing? Well, they're better off because now what we're doing is we are placing an emphasis on the training of youth development practitioners. For instance, we have the Community of Practice or COP for short uh, program area that offers professional learning opportunities for youth development practitioners who serve young people here in Montgomery County. The whole point of that is to bring these youth development practitioners together in a coordinated system of ongoing training with experienced and knowledgeable facilitators along with subject matter experts such as those that we have on staff uh, underneath the uh, guise of an expert-led symposium 
online courses and access to e-learning resources, right? So these things uh, at their core is meant to allow for youth development uh, practitioners to start to network amongst mm -hmm. each other, to share best practices and innovative program strategies with each other that ultimately promote positive youth outcomes for our county's young people. So, you know, that's one way of really making an impact on the work is by investing in those who are actually doing the work on behalf of the youth population. You know, recently I was talking to someone who, uh, who didn't know about you, but had been looking for something like that with other youth serving organizations. And when I explained, you know, who the Collaboration Council was, she said, oh, that's what I've been looking for. And literally within three days of going to your website, she found all the resources and connections that she needed. And I think she's now engaged um, in looking at hope, getting, getting involved with some of the training programs. So, so that is great. I, we don't have much time left, but I want to get to the issue of equity and the attention that we need to pay to the needs of those um, communities of color. How does the Collaboration Council help to ensure that youth are being served equitably and have access to the resources they need through all of these programs that you do convene? Well, I think the, the first uh, approach that we utilize is really engaging youth actively in those conversations around what they identify as being their needs, correct? So, you know, young people uh, are infinite. They have a lot of different identities. Uh, they all represent their own different communities, their cultures, and their heritage. So ultimately, it's our responsibility uh, as their adult allies, in this case, to hear their voices and all of their diversity. That's really important. So when you hear people say youth voice, they're attempting to put all youth into one category or the same boat. And we know that that's not true. That's not equity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, true equity uh, places a responsibility on the adults to acknowledge that every youth and community member is a unique individual. And then making sure that we identify those specific areas and try to provide them with the resources that they themselves have identified. But the first step is always making sure that there's a seat at the table for them. It's not talking to them, it's being in conversation with them. It's allowing for them to put together the platform to drive some of this work forward. And it's always interesting when you have, um, you know, the community that you're serving that can educate you. Um, so it's not always, you know, this relationship down. Youth can educate the adults too. And, and they often do, so um, good. All right, we've only got a minute left. Um, you do have opportunities for volunteers. Um, those are made available on your website, I believe. Um, also donations, uh, you do take donations and that helps with the work that you're doing in the community. There are a number of resources for people that are looking for uh, who some of the organizations are that do the service. So um, I wanna mention that Info Montgomery, I think is that link that they can go to. So, uh, we wanted to have a little more time, but that's all the time we have today. I want people to go to the website um, at collaborationcouncil.org and take advantage of the resources that are there. I want to thank Elijah Wheeler for being with us today and uh, joining us to tell us more about how the local management board works. And um, thank you for the impact that you make uh, in the community. Join us again next time on Studio 501C3, your window on nonprofits in Montgomery County. I'm Kim Jones, Executive Director of Nonprofit Village. Have a great day. This episode of Studio 501C3 was sponsored by MBA Growth Partners.